On this episode of G-Week, we hear what students have to say about the new changes to GW housing. Watch talented student performers hit the high notes and stun the crowd in the Battle of the Acapellas, and take a closer look at the many events that take place during the National Cherry Blossom Festival, which welcomes spring here in the nation's capital. All this and more on G-Week. Welcome to another episode of G-Week. I'm your host, Mary Grace Brown. On March 31st, the GW men's basketball made history at Madison Square Garden. The Colonials beat Valparaiso with a score of 76 to 60, making them the NIT tournament champions. This is the first time ever GW has earned this honor. The team took on Hofstra, Monmouth, Florida, and San Diego State to make it to the championship game. Key players in the tournament victory were seniors Kevin Larson, Patricio Garino, and Joe McDonald. Way to go, Colonials. New Jersey Senator Cory Booker will give the upcoming commencement speech to this year's class of graduating Colonials. The former Newark mayor and prospective vice president in the 2016 election will deliver his speech on the National Mall. Senator Booker broke the news to the GW community via Snapchat. Let's take a look. Hi, this is Senator Cory Booker. I am so excited to be George Washington University's commencement speaker and get a chance to stand with you as you all are sent off to change the world. Commencement will take place on May 15th. Housed in GW's own School of Media and Public Affairs building, Planet Forward is a two-day long summit created by Emmy Award winner and SMPA director Frank Sesno. On April 14th, panelists address major issues like climate change, renewable energy, and food waste. The theme to this year's summit was sustainable cities. Students across the country submitted digital works to the StoryFest competition, which proposed solutions to these global problems. The submissions were viewed and judged, and the winner will present their idea to the UN in New York City. Stay tuned for more headlines after the break. Raise high. This isn't just our battle cry. It's our call, our challenge. Because when you are called to Washington, you are called to higher expectations, to a higher standard. We are called here to advance knowledge, to serve society, to change the world. This is the George Washington University, and what we make is history. So stand up, be bold, take risks, press on, push harder, raise high. Welcome back. The Academy Award winner for Best Picture, Spotlight, was screened earlier this month by the School of Media and Public Affairs. The film tells the story of how the investigative team from the Boston Globe broke the news of child abuse in the Catholic Church. The screening was followed by a special panel discussion led by SMPA professor Cheryl Thompson. She talked with Marty Barron and Walter V. Robinson, two of the journalists who worked on uncovering the story that inspired the film. They shared what it was like to work on the story and about the importance of investigative journalism. Starting in the fall of 2017, GW Greek Life will see some major changes in the way they recruit their new members. A recruitment evaluation committee comprised of members from Greek organizations, as well as advisors, parents, and unaffiliated students, looked at the success of universities who have formal recruitment in the spring instead of the fall. They decided that changing the season of recruitment would be beneficial to the Greek community here at GW. The Recruitment Evaluation Committee produced a final report showcasing their findings. The report showed mixed evidence as to whether or not this will help freshmen integrate socially into the university. The report also highlights the academic benefits received by freshmen who go through recruitment. However, members of the committee have strongly stated that this will allow freshmen more time to acclimate to GW and take on leadership roles outside of Greek life before joining a Greek organization. Earlier this month, the annual Battle of the Acapellas event took place. Our entire crew went to enjoy the spirited event. Reporter Rudy Venkatesen has the scoop. Earlier this month, GW held its annual Battle of the Acapellas event. The sing-off, hosted by GW Class Council, was comprised of six diverse groups, including the Troubadours, the Voice Gospel Choir, the Mother Funkers, Sons of Pitch, The Pitches, and The Vibes. 
Some highlights of the night included the Mother Funkers rendition of Me, Myself, and I. As well as the Sons of Pitch version of Burning Up. In addition to their top picks, each group was required to perform Latch by Disclosure. The esteemed panel of judges chose the Troubadours as the night's winners. We had a chance to talk with them after the event. Well, I'm graduating, but if I can tell anything from these folks is that we're just going to keep getting better and better and play a lot of W's in our future. Yes. Uh, our newest studio album is called Mood Lighting. It's available on iTunes, Spotify, and you can buy it online. Battle of the Acapellas proved to be a fun and spirited event. For G Week, I'm Bruti Venkatesan. Thanks, Bruti. We'll be right back after the break. Stay with us. It's been pretty busy around here with parcel and flex plans going on sale, so we need an extra pair of hands around the office. Let's go, G Dub! Let's go, G Dub! We had no idea he would bring the Colonial Army. Whoosh! Ah, uh, G Dub! Uh, hey, hey, George, uh, I think you have an update for Firefox. Never mind. Welcome back. Earlier this month, GW held its annual Spring Fling Festival, which was a success. For the first time ever, an alternative event was also held, called Spring Bling. Here's Eric Robinson with the story. <laughs> On Saturday, April 2nd, GW students gathered in U Yard for GW's second annual Spring Fling event. Rapper Goldlink headlined the event with DJs Lean Katifa and Manila Killa kicking it off. This comes just two days after the program board removed rapper Action Bronson from headlining the event. The removal came after controversy erupted surrounding a 2011 song titled Consensual Rape. Action Bronson responded on his Facebook saying, So please let me make this very clear. I think rape and acts of violence toward women are disgusting. I would never condone anything remotely close to that type of behavior, and it's certainly not what I'm about at all. But the song in question has caused people discomfort and pain, and I'm sincerely sorry about it. Some students took issue with this removal, yet others agreed with the decision. <laughs> Due to the controversy surrounding Spring Fling, a variety of student organizations hosted Spring Bling on the Vern. Activities included performances by student groups, games, frisbee, drinks, and pizza. The event was designated as a safe space where members of the student body can enjoy a supportive environment for queer students and survivors of sexual assault. Those who went to Spring Fling experienced free food and drinks, an inflatable obstacle course, and a pitching lane. Students energetically crowded around the stage with the arrival of Goldlink until the event concluded at 8 p.m. nightfall. This is Eric Robinson, reporting for G Week. <laughs> popular spring event is the National Cherry Blossom Festival, which attracts more than 1.5 million people annually to the nation's capital. This year's peak bloom was observed on March 25th, but people were able to admire the blossoms for several days after. A gift from Japan nearly a century ago, the cherry blossoms are a symbol of unity and friendship between America and Japan. Visitors come from around the world to see DC's iconic cherry blossoms and to participate in various cultural events, including the Kite Festival, the Cherry Blossom 10 Mile Run, and the popular Cherry Blossom Parade. Reporter Alana Crennan got a behind the scenes look at this year's parade. Hi, I'm reporter Alana Crennan for G Week. We're behind the scenes right now at the Cherry Blossom Parade. I'm holding Daniel the Tiger in the balloon part. It's gonna be a really fun ride, so let's go. The energetic and colorful Cherry Blossom Parade culminated the month-long Cherry Blossom Festival on Saturday, April 16th. Spectators lined the iconic Constitution Avenue from 7th to 17th Streets to watch the annual event. The parade featured elaborate floats, performers, marching bands, celebrity entertainers, and many giant, decision-filled character balloons from both countries. 
I joined other volunteers to help carry one of the balloons. I'm holding the foot under the balloon for Daniel the Tiger. Daniel the Tiger is a character from a popular children's television show. Overall, it was a warm and sunny day, the kind of weather that is perfect for a parade. Thanks for going behind the scenes with me. For G Week, I'm reporter Alana Krennic. Thanks, Alana. We'll be right back after the break with an update on the new changes to GW Housing. Wonderful academic institution with a fine athletic tradition. Patricio Garino throws it down with two hands. Wonderful city. It's a great place to go to school. Keith and Savage open down the right side. We'll go and dunk it with his right hand. Not just a family, it's a whole community. Arwood dunks it with 1.9 seconds left. Arwood, a thunder slam. 81-80, George Washington. A huge victory for the Colonials. Welcome back. Housing is taking a new direction starting next fall. More with the story is G-Week reporter Rudy Venkatesen. Rudy? Thanks, Mary Grace. With all the major changes happening next year in regards to housing, we decided to hit the streets to ask GW students what they thought about their new housing situation. What do you think of housing here at GW in general? Um, I, I think there are some good options, you know, freshman, sophomore year. I, we, we lived in the West Hall, you know, it was, it was a pretty good time despite the, you know, Vern nonsense. I think the lottery system is fine. It means that everybody has a fair chance in getting into, I guess, the nicer dorms or maybe just like dorms with uh, lower prices and everything. So I think it's fair. GW students are actually required to live on campus for three years. Do you have any thoughts about that? Yeah, I think that's pretty unfair as well because obviously you're, pay you're paying a lot of money for it and you can get a lot better options for cheaper. So I think yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not, a good, uh, not a good idea. Especially living in an urban school, I think it's like really nice to like have that opportunity to like have like a traditional like on-campus style housing, Absolutely. which is really nice. So yeah, yeah. and like we're prime location too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Seniors actually only get the option of living on South Hall as opposed to other years when they could live in Ivory or City Hall. What do you think about that? Well, South Hall is in different price range, so I don't think that they should have taken away those different options because some seniors just don't want to pay that much. I was a little taken aback when I found out that South Hall was going to be the only option for seniors because as I was looking for housing, I thought, you know what, if I don't get housing, worst case scenario, I'll just live on campus, no big deal. If we didn't get South, again, I don't know where we would have lived. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of stressful and we just had to like bank on the fact that we were going to get it. J Street is actually closing down starting next fall and they're having a bunch of dining options opening underneath District House for all students. So what do you think about that? I think that's a good idea. I mean, I never had a problem with J Street, so as long as it's kind of like on par with that, the food for me would be fine. Um, as long as it's not done by pound and the price is not too expensive, I think that would be a good option, yeah. Overall, students seem to have some very mixed reviews in terms of housing. For G Week, I'm Vruti Venkatesan. Thanks, Rudy. Here with us now is Ali Balinki, the Resident Hall Association President for the upcoming school year, who will give us a more in-depth perspective on how the housing changes will affect students. Welcome to our show. Thanks for having me. Of course. So as president next year, what do you hope to accomplish with the RHA? Um, I hope to accomplish a lot and across a lot of um, areas of GW. First of all, definitely common rooms and common spaces to promote community in the halls. Also, safety and security, reprioritizing CSA staffing in the halls, um, and then also working with the Student Association to increase our advocacy of residential life and um, residence halls. Okay, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and can you please describe in detail what specific changes will be happening next year with GW Housing? Um, with GW Housing overall, it's impossible to have to tell like, what housing will change. Um, they definitely don't want to release that information too early because it, none of it is for certain until the trustees approve it every May. Um, but for along the lines of like student advocacy and the Student Association working with Residence Hall Association, um, we want to, first of all, get furniture in all the halls um, and all the common rooms, get them fully stocked so that residents can use them next year and they're available as study spaces or social spaces as needed. We also want to um, reprioritize CSA staffing, like I said, because right now, um, they're in halls that safety and security deems like high priority because of the amount of students living there or okay. because of freshman status. Uh -huh. But halls like Amsterdam that have three tap before you can get to any room don't necessarily need a CSA staff all the time, whereas halls like Guthridge or JBKO, where once you get fast past the first tap, you can get directly to a room on the first floor, that's a security risk and they should have CSA staffing. So things like that. Also, um, working with the Student Association on their affordability initiatives, um, along the lines of 
like ways that you can make um, student life more affordable right. in residence so halls. Expensive right yeah, now. it's so expensive. Um, well, halls like Amsterdam or Guthridge or Clark Hall in the Vern, they don't have overhead lighting in the rooms. They have a light in the kitchen. They have lights okay. in the bathrooms, and I believe little lights in um, the closets. So um, students get here, realize that their hall that their room doesn't have overhead lighting, and have to go buy lamps, and that's oh, an extra right. X amount of dollars that they shouldn't have to spend. So we're working with housing to get, um, right now City Hall has lamps in every room. We're working with housing to get those lamps moved into Amsterdam or Guthridge or a hall that could use them. And as um, housing and facilities continue to re renovate the halls, they're putting in lighting. So I House and Dakota, and I believe one other hall, I don't remember which one though, got lamps in every room last summer when they did renovations there. Uh -huh. So they're working on it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, small things that will help overall make them more affordable. Yeah. Got it. So yesterday, uh, students found out their housing assignments for next year. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how students have reacted and if they're overall happy, got the placements they wanted? Yeah. Um, from my friends, I've heard overall happiness. A lot of people got into the district, obviously, because it's such a big hall, and they're all really happy about that because it's going to be brand new and beautiful. Um, other students got into Shankman Hall and they weren't necessarily expecting it because they might be rising sophomores. So I've heard a lot of excitement over that. Um, yeah. Of course, there are people who got their ninth or tenth pick, and they're not as excited. But with 7,500 students living on campus, I think your tenth pick is pretty good, and that's why they housing asks you to make so many picks so that they right. can give you one of your top ten. Yeah. So at least they're yeah, at least they're getting one of them. Yeah. So we understand that with the class of 2019, there were so many students. Basically, there wasn't enough bedding to fit them all. So for example, in Madison, um, quads became six-person rooms to fit everyone. Do you think this might be an issue for next year? And if so, how do you think the university will improve that situation? Um, I think the university realizes that that was like a big thing they had to deal with and they don't want to do it again. Obviously they can't, um, it's hard to estimate how many students will choose to go here who we accept. So I think housing and admissions are working closer together now to try to get that estimate um, more accurate. If we get a lot of students again. I don't know what they'll do. You have to be creative. Yeah, <laughs> but um, but I think everywhere that they have added beds, it like that's maxed out. Okay, got mm -hmm. it. So another thing I wanted to talk about with you. So there's this new mandate now requiring all GW students to live on campus through their junior year, and that has resulted in significantly less housing options for seniors on campus. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me where where can seniors live now? Do they have a lot of options off campus or talk yeah. about that? So um, as a rising senior myself, I had to deal with that this year and most seniors gone to South. So let's say South is like a 400 person dorm, 500 people applied, 400 people got in. Um, out of the 100 who didn't, they had the option to stay on the wait list or not. About um, 50 dropped off, 50 stayed on, and then 50 people dropped out of South who had gotten a place. Okay. So everyone who wanted South ended up getting South. Um, and then seniors can also live in affinities around campus for different groups that they're in. And then I believe with extra spots around the halls after this whole process that happened yesterday of everyone getting their housing allocation. Oh, interesting. They still possibly could yeah. live on campus. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. So no one who like desperately needs to or wants to live on campus is being kicked off. Okay. Got it. So I'd like to talk to you now about District House. Mm -hmm. Our Brand new construction, it's about to be finished. So what features will this dorm have that other dorms do not? Um, district House is gonna be wonderful. Um, it will have the eating area with five or six um, dining options of different restaurants. Um, those aren't confirmed yet, the contracts still have to be signed, but it'll also have large common spaces for residents to lounge around and study spaces. Um, also, the entryway into the eating area will be separate from the entryway into the residence hall area. Oh, interesting. So um, it'll be safer in that way, whereas Shankman, some people um, are worried about that. Yeah, How anyone can kind of get right in yeah. if they're in the eating area, yeah. Um, so this will definitely be different, and there will be CSAs staffed at the entrances to the residence hall area of it. Um, and the Student Association is working to move forward the time that um, outside people can get into it. Okay. So in Shankman, I believe that the doors to the eating places are unlocked okay. until like 8, 9, maybe 10. Um, in District House, the Student Association is advocating for those to end at 7 p.m. 
Oh, okay. Um, they think any outside people who aren't UW students who want to eat there should eat there before 7 p.m. and then it should be student only tap. Okay, got it. So um, that's all not confirmed yet, but they're working on it. <laughs> um, and so what do you think about the sense of community in these GW residence halls? I think it varies from hall to hall, and that's one of the most unfortunate things about GW residence hall life is that it depends, completely depends what hall you're in for what your community will be like. Right. In Amsterdam or Shankman, where everyone has their own common room within their room, it might not be as strong because why go downstairs to the common area when you have a nice one in your room that's large enough for four people. Got it. Um, but I think in district house that will change a lot because the affinity common areas are built for 16, 20 people, so that will create a lot of a lot more bonding than is normally seen in a, okay. like a normal room. But also the greater common areas that will be for all students in the study spaces, I think will draw a lot of students first of all because they're new, yeah. and then it'll just like build community on its own. Perfect. <laughs> so final quick question, mm -hmm. what's your biggest priority for next year? My biggest priority is definitely um, building community in the way of common areas. So in a hall like Amsterdam where we have a nice common area but people don't use it because they all have study areas in their rooms, um, maybe we need to make that space into more of a social space so that they use it and so that they bond with people who aren't just their roommates. Got it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on our show and congratulations on being elected president. Thank you so much. We'll be right back after this break. Stay with us. It's on us. To stand up to those who tell us it's not our business. To tell our friends if what they're doing is wrong. It's on us. To do something, anything, to keep an assault from happening. To be more than a bystander. To create an environment where women feel and are safe. It's on us. To change the way we talk about women to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. It's on us. To say something when our friends are being stupid. To hold our friends accountable for their actions. It's on us. To, to look, look out, out for, for someone, someone who's had, who's too, had much too much to drink. to drink. To step in if a friend is doing something that could lead to sexual assault. It's on us. To not give our friends a pass. To never blame the victim. To stop a sexual assault any way we can. I am a member of the George Washington University community, and it's on us to end sexual violence. Welcome back. Hundreds of students at GW relayed for life earlier this month. Reporter Stephanie Adams has the story. Relay for Life is a worldwide celebration sponsored by the American Cancer Society to raise awareness and funds for the fight against cancer. On Friday, April 1st, from 3 p.m. to 3 a.m., over 600 GW students participated in the campus's annual Relay for Life. The event took place in the Smith Center, where participants celebrated the 12 hours with speakers, food, and performances by student groups on campus. Teams of students came together to fundraise and enjoy the food and entertainment with the common goal of beating cancer. Throughout the event, participants completed laps around the Smith Center and honored family members and friends affected by cancer with a luminaria ceremony. The event raised over $34,000 for the American Cancer Society. Reporting for G-Week, I'm Stephanie Adams. Thanks, Stephanie. On Monday, April 4th, Green GW held their annual Trash and Show at the Textile Museum. GW students designed and modeled outfits made completely out of recycled or repurposed materials. The event was judged by a panel including Daniel Silverstein, a zero-waste fashion designer in New York City. On April 23rd, TEDx Foggy Bottom held its annual conference at GW's Lisner Auditorium. This year's theme was Think Next, which encouraged the audience from the DMV area to take an innovative look at their future. This event featured 20 speakers, including GW freshman Harrison Jones, who spoke about narrative photography. Stay tuned for more headlines after the break. I. I believe. I believe. I believe that. I believe that. I believe that we. I believe that we. I believe that we will win. 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 Welcome back. At the beginning of the month, the Women's Leadership Program hosted their annual conference focusing on building healthy lives. The keynote speaker, Brigadier General Tammy Smith, Commanding General of the 98th Training Division of the U.S. Army Reserve, 
oversees more than 2,500 soldiers. With 26 years of experience, she shared her story of service and leadership in the military and the challenges she faced as a gay woman during the Don't Ask, Don't Tell era. She explained her reaction to the announcement of the repeal of the law. For the first time in my life, someone currently serving wearing a uniform said, I was perfectly okay the way that I was. Brigadier General Smith accredits her successful career to the opportunities created by the Army's new ideology of inclusion, as well as her personal collaborative leadership style and the support of her wife, Tracy. The 23rd annual Bhangra Blowout, a South Asian dance competition featuring Bhangra teams from across the United States, took place April 9th at Lisner Auditorium. Bhangra is a style of music and dance that originates in the region of Punjab, which is within northern India and Pakistan. Winning in first place was CMU Bhangra of Carnegie Mellon University, while second and third place were taken by GMU Bhangra of George Mason University and the Michigan Bhangra team of the University of Michigan, respectively. Are you staying in D.C. this summer? Are you looking to see some of the music chart's hottest artists? One of GW students' favorite on-campus eateries, Sweet Green, has put together another great lineup for their annual Sweet Life Music Festival. Headliners include the band The 1975, Halsey, and Flume. But music isn't the only reason to attend. Sweet Green has partnered with some of D.C.'s most popular eateries, such as Milk Bar, Luke's Lobster, Burrito, and Astro Donuts to provide food for the event. This year, Sweet Life will be held in Columbia, Maryland at the Meriwether Post Pavilion. Sweet Green is making it even easier for concert goers in the city to get to the venue by partnering with Lyft to provide discounted transportation. General admission tickets are on sale now for $100. Well, that brings us to the end of our final episode this year. Until next year, make sure to check out GWTV on our website at www.gw-tv.com. Thanks for tuning in, GW. We'll be seeing you next fall. Have a great summer.